It's Monday, which means it's the start of another busy news week. Here's a quick summary of everything you need to watch out for heading into another trading week. This morning, the Empire State Manufacturing Index came out way lower than expected at negative 31.8. This caused the dollar to drop hard on the initial release, but has pulled back since then. Tuesday is a busy day with the Claymont count change in the UK, followed by US retail sales and Canadian CPI, both releasing at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Later on that night, the Australian Wage Price Index report will be released. On Wednesday, the Bank of England's governor, Andrew Bailey, is speaking and will get the new Australian unemployment rate. On Thursday, we have U.S. unemployment claims, as well as a press conference with the Bank of Canada's governor, Tiff Macklem. We save the biggest for last because on Friday, Jerome Powell will speak at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Remember to watch out for our live streams each morning during the news events right here on the A1 Trading channel. All right, everybody, welcome back inside of the Edge Finder. We're going to start off like we normally do by checking out the market heat map first. But, you know, it's been a little while since we did one of these news videos. We've been trying out some other forms of content uh, here on the channel. We've been posting our live stream clips uh, daily uh, featuring, you know, the news events and uh, different traders from around the world having conversations. So those aren't going anywhere. I hope that you have been enjoying those. But at the start of the week, I think that we're going to do a full news rundown uh, to to kind of get you started get you uh, caught up with everything that's coming uh, uh, throughout the week as well as show off um, the edge finder here at the start of the week so that we can see how everything is trending and then also break down a currency pair for you so here we are like I said in the market heat map this shows us uh, what uh, all of our assets that we track here in the edge finder are doing what percentage they are up uh, or down on the day so far. It's getting updated every 15 minutes. So you know that as the market is moving, it's updating here in the market heat map as well. So you can be sure that you're getting accurate and up to date information uh, throughout the day. But yeah, up here towards the top here, these are our biggest movers to the upside so far today. And this top left box is our biggest mover to the upside out of all of them. And it's actually Bitcoin. We now have Bitcoin listed in the edge finder that has been our most requested asset for forever pretty much is bitcoin and we are finally working on implementing bitcoin all the way throughout the edge finder um and is in the market heat map now and we can see that it is up 1.63 percent on the day uh, followed by aussie jpy up 0.85 percent on the day gbp jpy cf uh, chf jpy NZD, JPY, and Aussie USD. So yen crosses seem to be selling off today, or at least the uh, the Japanese yen seems to be selling off today. Uh, taking a look at these different currency crosses right here. But if we take a look down here towards the bottom of the list, we can see our biggest moves to the downside so far today. And we have this box all the way down here with our bright, bright red. This is USDZAR and it is down 1.28% on the day so far, followed by USD CHF, Euro AUD, USD CAD, Euro GBP, GBP AUD, and Euro CHF. Those are our seven biggest movers to the downside so far today. Let's take a look at the watch list. We can check out our buy and sell biases here in the edge finder right now we can also remove any indices or commodity or even crypto you know what i'll keep crypto in there just for fun but i'm going to remove the indices and commodities uh, out of the edge finder just so we can shorten up our list just a little bit and this is what we're left with we have three strong buys at the moment and two strong sells and i already have an idea of what I want to take a look at and it's euro usd going into uh the the start of the week i, I know nick has been talking about euro usd i believe ivan uh, also has been talking about euro usd on the live streams it's a it's a major us dollar pair it's a big one and i think that it's a good one to start off the week get a ground kind of basis on what the euro is doing what the us dollar is doing at the, like i said the beginning of the week so here we go with this strong sell bias score is minus six cot data is a score of zero and retail sentiment is a score of minus one 
taking a look right over here at the cot data do you have any questions about any of our products or services right now members of the a1 trading team are standing by waiting to assist you you can head over to our website a1trading.com and click the icon in the bottom right hand corner to chat with one of our team members live you can also go to a1trading.com contact and fill out the contact us form and someone will get back to you shortly we have our helpful and friendly members of our support staff ready to chat with you anytime Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. So what are you waiting for? If you have any questions, feel free to chat with us live right now on the A1 Trading website. Pretty clear to see why it's getting that zero or that neutral score. And it's because uh, institutional traders or smart money traders, however you may refer to them, they're both favored long uh, on the US dollar and the euro, respectively. We can see 67.35% long bias on the US dollar and 76.29% long on the euro. Retail sentiment, on the other hand, is uh, favored on the long side as well, 71% long there and 29% short. Seasonality is a score of plus one, and we can see that in the month of May, historically speaking, if you were to uh, just isolate the month of May over the last 10 years and uh, took a look at how Euro USD trended throughout the month of May, you would notice that it trends just slightly, slightly bullishly, historically speaking. Uh, has not really been the case so far this month. We've seen some some pretty consistent uh, sell-offs day-to-day, uh, -day, but that is, historically speaking, it typically is bullish, slightly bullish. Our trend reading is a score of minus two, and we can see that this thing has pretty much made nothing but downward moves uh, for the past week or so. Uh, we can see all the way back to May 8th here in our little trend projection box. And yeah, pretty much ever since May 8th, it has continued to sell off, moving lower and lower. Price forecast predicts that that will continue to be the case. Finishing up here with our fundamentals, we have GDP growth, inflation, unemployment, and interest rates, all with scores of minus one. We can see those numbers right over here. GDP growth uh, in the euro area, 0.1% compared to 1.1% in the US. Inflation, 7% uh, compared to 4.9%. Unemployment, 6.5% compared to 3.4%. And lastly, interest rates on the euro are 3.75% compared to 5.25% on the US dollar. So there we go. Breakdown of Euro USD has been trending down for a little while now. And with this strong sell bias, it certainly seems like it's one to keep your eye out on. So we've got about 40 seconds here at the time of saying it. You guys are slightly behind me. So we've got this coming down pretty soon. And again, I'm not trading the spike. Please be aware. I'm not trading the spike for gold. I have been holding on to a swing trade since last week. So my stop loss is pretty wide and my size is very small. So I'm not scalping the news by any means. So please be aware that we got breaking news. Check it out. All right, guys, we're about 10 seconds out. We'll see what the number comes out to be. And if there is any volatility for dollar crosses, indices and commodities, let's take a look. Dollar down here initially, seeing a little bit of a spike. The gold market popping back up to 2016. Dollar is down here. There we go. 102.41 printing. And dollar yen, 136 being broken through as we speak. The S&P 500 not able to catch a bid, but there goes gold. And let's see, are we back into profit? We got a little bit of profit on the table. Nothing crazy, but a little bit of a pop there on gold here this morning. Trading at 2016, 2017. Let's see, could 2018 be hit here? We've got gold making a run for it. There it goes, 2018. I feel like I'm at an auctioning center. Can we get 2020? Can we get 2020? Anybody with 2020? <laughs> um, yeah. Yes, so gold trading at 2018, an ounce. Retreating back off of that, an interesting uh, pop here this morning. And again, I continue to be long on gold from last week. I've been holding this trade for a little while. Um, you know, the, 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 the big thing here for me is this is more of the four, four hour zone. We're watching this four hour zone, guys, and it, it's, it's trying to prove itself. Yet again, price came down strong right off of this level. Price came down. I picked it up on Friday 
We're slightly in profit. The question is, can we push off this level and can we actually get a good run going on this gold market? And you know, here's your one hour chart view, guys. And you can see we're making an attempt here, right? I'm not a big trend line guy. You guys know this about me if you watch the streams. But sometimes a trend line can be crafty. I, I don't base trading decisions off trend lines personally. Um, I use market structure. And then I also, of course, use fundamentals to make primary decisions with my trading. But the trend lines can be fun. And so you can see we have this simple trend line here to the downside. Um, Let's see if price can get a little bit of a pop. If we can get a push, again, gold now trading around 2016. We'll see if we can get a break to the upside there. And uh, sort of a decision point for gold. Are we going to push off these lows or are we going to uh, break through them? So we'll have to keep an eye on uh, the price action here this morning. Again, I am already long uh, as of last week. There's the position floating $154 at this time. Real quick, guys, I do also want to say um, we've got to take a quick look at the smart money tracker. So check this out. We're going to do the smart money tracker here update. We do this every Monday. Uh, it's a great time to do it because again, the smart money tracker or the COT data that we get, it comes in once a week. So every week we get the data and this is the fresh data. We just loaded it in here. We're looking at the COT report data, the smart money tracker that we use on the edge finder. And here is the numbers, you guys. This is the latest updates on positioning. What we see here is gold continues to be, in terms of smart money, the number one buy. Here comes the Nikkei coming in at number two, the euro number three, platinum four, US oil five. What you have, guys, what you're looking at is the COT. If you don't, the, the, who does anybody know what COT report tells us? If you know what COT is, type yes in the chat. If you don't know what COT, if you've never heard of that before, type no in the chat. Let's just get a let's just get a little bit of a feedback from the audience really quick. Do you guys know what the COT report is? Sometimes people do know what it is and sometimes people don't. So let's get an update on this and see what um, what's going on. So lots of yeses. Okay, cool. The COT data, it's it's nothing magical. It, I don't want to come across as this is some sort of holy grail, but it's excellent, especially if you're sort of a swing trader to even a little bit of day trading action can be useful in this. If you don't know what this is, the uh, a boring text file. Yes, it is. It absolutely is a boring text file. Um, it is a boring text file initially. And then what we've done is we built software that pulls that text file into a visual report like what you're seeing on the screen. Um, I'll tell you how you guys can get access to try this out for free in just a moment. But what we're looking at is the positioning of institutional money, right? Not me guessing what this is. This is straight from them. It is a bit delayed. So that's why I say it's a little bit more oriented towards swing traders, position traders, et cetera. Uh, but it still can be very useful to see what institutional traders have been doing. Lately, institutional traders are buying gold. They're buying the Nikkei. They're buying the euro. On the flip side, they're selling the yen, they're selling the S&P 500, which interesting, that spiked up as a bigger sell. They're selling yield, they're selling the Canadian dollar, and they're selling the Australian dollar. This is very notable, guys. So what we're looking at here is these assets, institutionals are bearish on. These assets, big players are bullish on based on their positioning. As simple as that. Don't forget to check out the links in the description if you want our broker recommendation, access to our free Discord, free Edge Finder, or want to chat with us on Telegram. Remember, you can watch us live in the markets every morning starting at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and we have lots more free trading tools and content available on our website, a1trading.com. Thanks for watching.